92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, and RTC streaming audio live on Channel 5. We're going to stream audio and eventually some video live on RTC Channel 4. Hi, Scott. Hello. Scott's back in the studio this morning. And, of course, smartphone, Android, download the TuneIn radio app, take us wherever you happen to be going, which... For one reason or another, it might be to City Hall today where you can say good morning to Mayor Ted Denton. Oh, uh, yeah. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. How you all doing? Oh, wait a minute. I'm not from South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Amy. How are you out there? All right, uh, Mayor, you uh, had a City Council meeting yesterday afternoon, right? Or we, early evening? We did. Uh, in special session yesterday, we had uh, actually we had a plate. It was getting pretty full, so we decided to have a special meeting and go through some things. Uh, a couple of things that uh, we addressed, we had a tax abatement uh, renewal uh, from Topps Industries, which uh, we've tabled now to a meeting next week. Uh, we're going to have another city council meeting on May the uh, uh, 17th, Tuesday the 17th. And that is Tuesday, isn't it, Tom? It is. Okay, it is. all right. right. That, Tuesday, seventeenth. Tuesday is is going to be our next council meeting at six o'clock, and we will uh, act on that ab abatement. There was some paperwork that uh, needed to be finished up, so we weren't able to complete that that request. Uh, we did have another tax abatement proposal that we addressed uh, from Advance uh, Magnetics. Um, they've uh, they purchased uh, about a half a million dollar piece of equipment over there, a uh, new laser cutting machine that's a pretty, pretty high tech piece of equipment that's gonna allow uh, the folks to, uh, to get, some, uh, get some work over there that uh, gonna bring some business to the community. So Excellent. Absolutely, we, yeah. uh, we acted on that one in a favorable manner. Uh, and then, uh, <clears throat> We took a look at uh, uh, a, a piece of legislation, which was the main part of our meeting last night, an ordinance uh, uh, request that uh, uh, would uh, put some uh, put some more uh, teeth, if you will, into our ordinance on our downtown uh, structures and uh, revitalization of downtown. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, currently any uh, revitalization efforts, uh, our ordinances and building codes and such deal mostly with the structural integrity of the, of the buildings. But uh, in 2008, the, uh, the area from 3rd Street to 9th Street was designated our historical corridor. And uh, at least the intent was that any revitalization, any uh, redoing of that, of those areas, would uh, be in a historical manner, uh, preserving the buildings to their original state to, to a certain extent. Well, we've not had any real specifics ordinance-wise that guides that or uh, leads in that direction. So we felt it was critical that we, uh, we open that door up and get that nailed down. Um, the result of that uh, discussion last night, we did have two building owners who were present who said they were all for that type of, uh, of uh, restructuring the ordinances and uh, certainly agreed with what was being talked about for the historical downtown, but felt our uh, meeting was a little premature in that they didn't feel it had been advertised to the extent that other building owners knew exactly what was going on last night. So the council uh, decided then to uh, forego any action until we have some more publicity on uh, on what's going on and then have the follow-up meeting on the 17th to act upon it. So I would encourage any building owners out there, anybody interested in the downtown corridor to uh, attend that meeting on the 17th and give your input to the council members. What does the ordinance say? Currently? Or the ordinance? The, the, ordinance, the proposed ordinance that will take up next week. What, what, uh, what, what what type of specifics, if there are any specifics, is it trying to, to get done for the historical district for well, the city? Well, that's a good point, Tom. It, it's, uh, it's talking about the uh, types of materials that can be used, uh, uh, limiting uh, uh, the use of steel for uh, facades and or brick and the original materials uh, uh, 
should be used to retain that original look. Uh, it, uh, it does give uh, the city council some leeway in uh, uh, deciding uh, when somebody wants to do something, if they bring it, their, their plans, their thoughts to the city council, they get input from the council. That's pretty much what the ordinance is talking about. Uh, we did have a couple of points in the ordinance that uh, Casey Coles and Andy Perkins were going to go back and rewrite. Uh, it, it, it was pretty blunt and specific in saying no, no metal to be used. And then there were some comments to the fact that there's some architecturally grade metal out there today that can replicate the historical look as much as possible. But again, you have to be very careful with uh, replicating something because there is a historical a building designation by the, uh, by the state for, for tax credits and such that you can lose if you don't meet certain parameters. So that's, that's pretty much what it was saying. Visiting this morning, Rochester Lake Manitou Mayor Ted Denton on our city government report. Mayor, does any of this uh, reflect on 9th and Main? Yeah, exactly. That is one of the areas uh, of concern. Uh, the infamous wall there at 9th and Main uh, originally uh, was uh, uh, planned as a brick facade wall uh, to replace what had been lost there. That was the, uh, the, the owner had uh, submitted a plan to the state to that effect. Uh, got, the, uh, got the plan sitting on my desk right now. Well, now we're into a situation where time has expired and gone so long uh, the monies aren't there for whatever reason for the owner to go forth and complete that task and is, would, would be looking to do something less expensive. So we're in discussions right now as to how both parties can be satisfied. We can end up with something that is uh, still in the historical uh, uh, avenue that we're looking for. but. Uh, not cost uh, the owner a small fortune to do. So we're in negotiations on that. The city then owns the land. No, no, no not the city. Fedco. Fedco owns the land. Correct. But the wall itself is owned by the individual property owner. Correct. Is that correct? The, the building owner, okay. uh, Mr. Uh, Rob Lau. Okay. Rob's in the process of uh, selling it to uh, Mr. McIntyre okay. on, on a contract situation. So uh, actually we have the two gentlemen uh, we're dealing with there. And uh, hopefully we're going to have that moving forward here uh, within the next uh, couple of weeks. I think a lot of people would like to see something happening oh, on that. And, yeah, and no, I know yeah. that when Fedco took it over, we did do some fill-in work and we things did. like that. We did, but uh, the wall is critical. That, that has to be the next step. And, and yeah, nobody would like to see that completed any more than, than the mayor. <laughs> When this ordinance is in place, then will that that will reflect on anybody who is a building owner and wants to do something structurally to their building? Correct? Right, right, and of course, anybody who has something already would, you know, would be grandfathered. But any any movement in the future for uh, remodeling, redesign, whatever would uh, would fall under that ordinance. Then. Let me ask you a quick question. Let's say the 8th Street Radio Building with our metal awning out there, will that still be permitted? Well, again, that's a grandfathered situation. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah uh, this is why the ordinance was written with the City Council uh, being a review board, if you will. Uh, the Somebody has to be the judge as to what the intent for your historical corridor is. Uh, we're also reaching out uh, before next week to uh, North Manchester who has, they've done a pretty decent job of establishing their historical corridor and moved forward in that direction. We're getting uh, a copy of their ordinance to kind of peruse and make sure we're covering everything. Mayor, I know we have a downtown action committee. We have the Main Street program, which I think is also part of what's happening in the downtown area now. Is there any way to stimulate business per se in the downtown area? We're talking about doing some some facade work with ordinances and things like that, and I understand that whole concept. But we're going to need 
eventually to have the businesses to fill the buildings. Is there is there anything? I mean, we, we talk about the banks and, and how tough it can be sometimes for a small business entrepreneur to try to get some kind of a loan. Is, is there anything the city can do in terms of stimulus for that? Well, you know, again, that is something that's chicken and the egg. One follows the other. <laughs> and it all comes back, uh, as I stated during the campaign, economic development. Uh, if we don't have people coming to our community, investing in our community, nothing happens. We have people who uh, want to go into businesses, who want to do things, uh, but they all come back with the same question. What's my return on investment sure. going to be? Uh, you know, we've had stores that uh, have uh, gone out of business just recently, and I talked to the previous owners, and they say, you know, I would be here for a whole week and maybe see one or two people. Uh, business people can't survive like that. Uh, part of this mayor's effort, as many of you know, has been uh, to try and stimulate that economic development. Uh, and, and to that end, I reach out every week now. I'm calling somebody, visiting somebody, doing something to try and promote some development in Rochester. And uh, I know uh, many of you have read the uh, reporting from the OrthoWorks trip with uh, Terry Lee and Amy Rowe and myself on April the 26th. Well, since that time, a follow-up to that, uh, last week, a week ago this, yesterday, I was invited over to uh, Paragon Medical over at Pearson to meet with uh, the owner, uh, Toby Bucks, executive assistant, uh, Donna Fisher, and the chief executive officer over there, and we discussed uh, economic development in Rochester and such, and uh, they, uh, they told us, they said, hey, people are talking about Rochester. You folks have made, uh, made uh, an impression. Uh, just keep it up, keep it up. It's the squeaky wheel that will eventually get greased. So that was kind of encouraging Good. here. Good, good. Uh, also, since that time uh, this week, I've uh, made contact with a couple of other people I'd like to mention. John uh, Kirshen, uh, who is with uh, Charter Capital Partners. They're an investment uh, banking group, and they were the people who were instrumental in bringing American Axle to Rochester and marrying them with the Rosano family and creating that situation where we now have a, a factory that, that's operating and employing people with the uh, uh, roughly 40 uh, uh, pretty, pretty good jobs. Okay. And uh, in talking to John, uh, the uh, the uh, objective of that conversation was, hey, John, keep in mind, Rochester still has other other things to offer, and if you can get some things going, we certainly would appreciate that and would want to work with you wherever we can. And he let me know that uh, in the investment banking world, they're the ones who provide the money for industries and people to do things, uh, entrepreneurs and what have you. And in that case with the Rosanos and American Axel, he had Rosanos as a client, and he had American Axel as a client. So he looked at the two and he said, hey, this looks like a perfect fit. Brought them together, it was a perfect fit. So things like that is how, how, how business happens, but the people have to know who you are, where you are, that you're interested. Uh, in that conversation, he asked what marketing we had done to date. I mentioned the orthopedics world. and He, he laughed, and I said, well, what are you laughing at? And he said. That's one of our biggest customers. Sure. And I said, oh, great. He says, we'll keep you on the radar screen. Send me your information and we'll keep it on the radar screen. Okay. So, you know, it's reaching out, reaching out. I had the opportunity to uh, speak with the uh, group vice president for uh, Lao Industries Johnson Controls, Tom Edwards, this last week in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, knew Tom from a previous life, just picked the phone up, called him and said, hey, appreciate your business here in Rochester. Lau's been here for a long time. We appreciate your presence. We want to make sure we're doing everything and anything we can to keep you here and also let you know you have a friend in City Hall. If you want to do an expansion, you want to do anything, just pick the phone up and call. He was very grateful to hear from me and uh, said, you know, Rochester has treated, uh, treated us very well. Uh, appreciate the call. So okay. it's reaching out, okay. reaching out. 
you got a busy time coming up at your meeting Tuesday night. We do. We do. Uh, hopefully lots of people show up and okay. give their thoughts. All right. Uh, six o'clock? Six o'clock. Okay. City Hall. City Hall. Rochester Lake, Manitoba, Mayor Ted Denton. Mayor, as always, we appreciate your time this Thank morning. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being Thank here. Thank you, Scott.